Hello, welcome to the Real Internet Come Forth YouTube channel. My name is Internet Smith and I am your author. Remember to get your books, get your books, get your books, people. They are on sale at Amazon, Walmart.com, Books A Million, Indigo, Barnes & Noble. All of my Real Internet Come Forth book series are on sale on multiple platforms. You can get them in digital version or paperback. All of the books comes with its own bookmark. Remember, each book comes with its own bookmark. Each book comes with the loyalty card. The Real Internet Come Forth comes with the loyalty card. It is five, nine values, four separate books. If you buy the first three books, I will give you the fourth book for free, which is value seven, eight, and nine, the final book of this series. Send me proof that you have purchased your books, whether digital or paperback, and I will get your loyalty card to you, and I will get your bookmarks to you, Okay. The Behind the Scene book series, which is the sequel to The Real Internet Come For, is five separate books. You buy the first four books, I will give you the fifth book for free. Once again, each one of these books also comes with its own bookmark. So send me proof that you have these books and I will get your bookmarks to you. Once you buy the ones and you own your uh, free book, I will send you a signed copy. Okay? So, we are still in the real internet come forth, value number six, titled The Breaking of Me. Remember, it is titled The Breaking of Me. And it is age 30 to 33, and it is about divorce and children leaving home. Two very, 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 very difficult subjects. Now, last week I read the chapters to you. So, this week I'm going to read from chapter nine. And it is titled Mental Breakdown. And it is March 2007. Okay. Chapter 9, Mental Breakdown, March 2007. I had, it had been a rough couple of weeks, to put it lightly. My son was now distant and withdrawn from us. He kept, a, he kept the little ones while I worked overnight. But I was going to have to put them in daycare. So I signed them up for overnight daycare. I signed them up for the boys and girls school so that they can make friends after school and their brother could attend track practice. <clears throat> I was going to have to switch jobs to be off in the evenings. I quit McDonald's on short notice. I told them that I was having family problems, so that day was my last day. Of course, they offered to switch my shift, but I refused because it's just too much. I was and continually being reminded that my baby worked, that my baby worked there and that my husband came up there showing out so i opted out for a fresh start so i was now opening for burger king 5 a.m to 1 p.m three days a week and i worked at blue sky four days a week from 10 p.m to 6 a.m my managers both at burger king and blue sky were aware of my shift in my home the shift in the change in my home and i told them both that my children were my life so if at any point they call me and I need me, I will have to leave. So they said, okay, they understood. So I worked on to the best, so I worked to the best of my ability. Now we had not heard a word from my husband at this point. We called his family and no one knew where he was or he just left. <clears throat> well, could y'all tell him to call his children, please? My son called every evening the time he got home from school. He called his aunts, his uncles to reach out to his father. This had really taken a toll on my son. I saw the difference in his behavior and attitude. His father was his world. He lived, he loved his mama, but his father was his heart. And I understood that because I'm a daddy's girl. Um, my son asked to use my car. He just wanted to go to a party. So I said to him, man, don't be drinking, okay? I had already been giving him $60 a week for allowance. He was a teenager, 14 years old now. I knew that he was sexually active, so I still let, left a bowl of condoms out on the table, um, even when his sisters was home. Now, some of you would say that I was permitting sexual behavior by doing this, but I was not. I was real. I knew that two of my children were sexually active. I didn't want them to be pregnant or making babies, nor did I want them to have a sexually transmitted disease. So yes, we talked about all of these things and have since, and I have since my children were about six or seven years old. My oldest child, 
I would rather educate my children on life, truth, and love, and then and have some stranger guess a line to them about life, sugarcoating the truth and not making them aware of the dangers of sex. Once virginity is lost, you will never, 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 never get it back. He left at 6 p.m. I said, man, be home at 11 p.m. There's plenty of time to hang out with your friends. Okay, Ma, I will. <clears throat> sure enough, he got home about 10, came into the house, tore up. Ma, I'm sick. Take my friend home. I threw up in the car. I said, oh, my God, man, take a shower and lay, under, and lay down. I'll be right back. But I'm hungry, Ma. I said, man, take a shower and lay down, please. I told my baby son to help him get in the bed, and I'll be right back. I got into the car. Lord have mercy. The smell of weed, alcohol, and puke filled the air. The boy laid over asleep. I said, hey, 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 son, where do you live? He said, some street. I said, you're going to have to wake up to show me I'm not from Brookhaven, so I don't know these streets. He said, okay. He sat up and went back to sleep. I woke him up and said, baby, where do you live? About 25 minutes of me talking to him and getting him a Sprite to drink, we found the house. I walked him to the door, and his brother opened the door and said, do you do he live here? The boy said, yes, ma'am, I'm his brother. I said, okay, I'm Antonio's mother, so I brought him home. He said, thanks. I returned to my house and asked my baby if man took a shower. He said, yes, ma'am. And my baby girl said, I cooked him hot dogs. He ate five hot dogs, ma. I said, okay, y'all, thanks. And went into his room and said, man, are you okay? No, ma'am, I'm sick. I said, just stay under the fan and go to sleep. You will feel better soon. I called off the next morning because I needed to talk to my son. Once he awoke, I he took another shower. And I had been to the store to get him a Sprite to drink. And to clean out my car. I didn't have a clue what he drank the night before. Um, drink some Sprite to settle your stomach. He did. And sat down at the table. And I said, man, I know that you. Man, I know what you're doing. Okay. And so I'm going to end the story right there. You would have to get the book. And finish to see what I said to my son. After taking my, having my car. And I told him don't drink any drink. So. Okay. Um, I have one question. Let me see. Because I did the other three. Um, and this says, <clears throat> Woman of God, there is no doubt you carry so much grace. If I may ask you, did you acquire it or were you given it? If acquired, can you please recommend a very reputable theological academy to study or be certified? Or does it involve the holy pilgrim of Israel? God bless you. Overflowing measure. We love you eternally from Nigeria. Okay. It is grace <laughs> that I operate in. It's all grace. The Bible says God resists the proud but give grace to the humble. And then in 2 Corinthians it says that he will make sure and have an abundance of grace for every good work. So if you're doing a good work from God and you're humble, he will give you grace to do the work he calls you to do. But you have to be humble in order to give grace. Uh, when the Lord give me an opportunity and allow, afford me the opportunity to come before people and um, I get to minister. That's grace at work. It's not me. It's grace at work. I yield myself to be um, used by him. And it's not one thing that you do to get grace. It's, it has to become, you have to have a lifestyle of being in his word, a lifestyle of prayer, worship, communion, fellowship with him, um, be, walking in obedience um, being a tither, being a giver, um, being a sore, you know, and being a servant. It, it's, it's a plethora of things that you have to do to be the total package for God. I, I just put it that way. Um, I've never been to seminary school ever. Um, I thought I was going to go to seminary school, but God had other plans. When it came time for me to be trained for ministry, he sent me to a pastor um, to sit under for two years. And he told me I had two years to get it together. I had two years to learn what I needed to learn because I was behind in my destiny. Um, and he had to speed me up quickly. 
I completed it, and then he shifted me to another pastor, which was of a higher um, calling to train me for the end time army, which is what I'm being trained for now. Um, and so we do have a mentorship program. We do have um, books that we have to read and training courses that we had to have because you have to be trained to be in ministry. So I am in school, but I've never been to a theological school Um and, and it all comes from God. You have to be taught to walk the walk. You know, you have to spend time in his presence. Um, you have to spend time in his word. And then you have to know what your assignment is. You have to be trained for your specific assignment. Everybody has an assignment. Everybody don't have the same assignment. So I can't do what John over here did and think I'm going to get the same results. Because it doesn't work. My assignment for me is custom made for internet. You know, um, but everybody has a process um, to complete. Everybody has um, a role to play in God's kingdom. So find out what your role is. Um, stay before God. He will tell you. He will teach you. He will train you. Um, I've been trained in the school of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has taught me many, many things. Um, I've been trained and, and, and taught in dreams and visions. Um, and... Uh, and then through revelation knowledge, fasting um, opens your eyes to a lot of different things. You hear clearly, um, you, you see clearly, it weakens your will so you can walk in what God has shown you and told you. So it's, 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 it's not just a one thing that you do, but it's all come from God. It's his grace. He says some plant, some water, but God give the increase. Okay, so he have a lot of different people work. You have many teachers to the guides. That you that you will have in this life to help you in this journey called life for to prepare you for the kingdom. So I pray that I have answered your question, Nigeria. And remember, until we meet again, God gets the glory, and I tell the story. Goodbye.